All right, so we have a headline here that just popped. Um, because we mentioned start at the top of the show that Donald Trump is expected to be at the House Republican Conference on Tuesday, and he has told Fox News that he would accept the speakership if it was offered to him for a quote-unquote short period. Kara? Yeah, I mean, like I said before, it's really interesting, but I think when it comes to this, Republicans, they have to unite, right? We need sort of a Lincoln second inaugural malice toward none thing here going on. So, you know, if Trump can do that even briefly, okay, you know, I'll, I'll consider it as an analyst that, that it's a good thing, but we need a fighter. I think that's it. We need a fighter. Americans, are they realize we're at an inflection point. If he can be that fighter, maybe it's a good thing for a time. Okay, so, I don't know. So, Bill, as the former uh, Trump White House cabinet secretary, what does Donald Trump consider a short period? <laughs> hundred days. Hundred. If, if I would okay. say, if I would say, no, it would I'm serious. Be about like, what, days. Is, what is short? Is short three days, three weeks, three no, months? No, I think it'd be about a, a little over three months. You think? So? I think. I think if he were to do it, it would be about hundred days because they would want to do it for the budget, uh, this, you know, all of the appropriations. Plus, he would really bring to the floor uh, the border wall and all of the the border issues that he. Really do you think cares. he wants this? I think it's a it's a welcome uh, distraction from New York, uh, <laughs> where the civil trial and other things are going on. And I don't mean that in jest. Um, but I think, you know, in order for Donald Trump to be offered this position, that means 218 members yeah, so of a 222 uh, conference have to make that offer to him. And so I don't think the conference is that in the shut the government down over these issues that have caused this vacancy. Oh, but that is, so that's, but, that's but, 40 days down the line. Like, I think we're a ways. We're, we're missing some there. key, <laughs> some key facts days, here. It's a, it's a uh, number one, House Republican conference rules say you cannot held a leadership position if you've been federally indicted. So right. I don't know how they get around that. But there's a witch hunt exception. They, yes, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. And then secondly, I don't I think this is what it. Republicans had in mind when they were wishing for divine intervention. All right. Here, here's, here's a headline from the National Review. Uh, from just the other day, and I wonder if you if if y'all think it's spot on. The GOP is leaderless, and that's exactly how Trump wants it. Kara, is that, is that right? I mean, National Review, sort of notwithstanding. I, 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 I think that I think they're not fans. Uh, translation. <laughs> Trump is, as I've said before on the show, he's the leader of a movement, and now you're seeing, you know, a blockbuster report from Newsweek coming out saying the the eight federal agencies are weaponized against Trump supporters. They're calling them purveyors of anti-government and anti-authority ideologies. Uh, you know, I've been in the counterterrorism space for years. Uh, that is not a good harbinger of things to come. So if people are going to rally behind him, the, the more he gets indicted, the more he goes to court. If those donations are going up and he's seen as sort of a martyr figure, um, you know, I, I think we're, we're going to continue to see uh, people coalesce behind him the more that he is targeted and the more that his supporters are targeted. You know, she raises a good point because some of the problems with Scalise's candidacy is that his, there, there's concerns that his health will not allow him to yeah. travel the country and raise money and that Jim Jordan you know, doesn't have this the kind of power to bring together a, a, a caucus. Trump does check a lot of those boxes. I mean, I'm not advocating for a speaker Trump here, but he can unite the caucus. He can raise money for them. Lord. And maybe he can get them through this tumultuous time. You know, we will see. But at the end of the day, this is a legislative position. You have to build coalitions. That's not something Donald Trump is known to do. And the, in, a, in a battle between Donald Trump and Chuck Schumer and the White House, I think we're in for a lot of gridlock and a lot of uncertainty in the months to come if that happens. But Desi, what does he do about solving the schism between the eight hardliners and the moderates on the Republican side? And what do you do about it only takes one person to remove the speaker or to file a motion for the speaker? I'm not sure any Republican in the House GOP he's, should it, want that he's position. Got, he's got the eight. The question is, you right. know, like Chris But Tyrell the motion to here. vacate's not limited to the majority party. The Correct. Democrat could file it. Yep. So if the Democrats wanted to mess with the Trump speakership, they'd file one every day. Unless the Republicans got behind the rules change. Stuff, and they could fix this. Right. Stuff going on yeah. here in Washington. All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.